Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Here's a current image of Old Faithful on the Tipsy live webcam. It's still working. And we, we've talked about how it looks like the dome for Old Faithful seems a little bit larger, and it does. Currently it's 28 degrees there. Uh, tonight will be minus 2 degrees. But here's the latest of what's going on with Yellowstone. Here we have the seismometers. On the left here is the monitor for Norris Junction. In the center is for Yellowstone Lake. Yeah, look at all those marked in red. And on the right, that is Moose Creek, Idaho. I don't have uh, West Thumb on there. That monitor is not working. USGS is only reporting one earthquake for today and 26 for the entire week. Uh, the only one they are reporting today is a 0 0.9, which was a quarry blast. And you notice it's minus uh, 2.0 kilometers above sea level. So that would be almost one and a half miles from sea level, and all earthquakes are measured from sea level. But here on the seismometer, the most significant earthquake of all those that are marked and marked in red means the uh, geologists were alerted that this earthquake did happen and they're to come in and review the earthquakes was at 1005 again this is Moose Creek Idaho um, this one here with Norris Junction and the one on the left would be Yellowstone Lake and there's its signature with the spectrogram and we'll look at the actual signature of that earthquake there we go Here's the signature um, that I pulled using IRIS on uh, Jamison's file at Moose Creek, Idaho. I'm going to pull that, but I want to show you these other earthquakes. This is uh, Yellowstone Lake. We'll go back to that in a minute. Yeah, they're not reporting this earthquake, and I'll make it larger. And we'll change the horizontal. And then I want to show you, um, well, actually what I'm going to do is pull the file at Norris Junction so you can see it was picked up on three different monitors. Let me bring that down. Came in very small at Norris Junction, and I'll make that larger. And then we'll pull it from Yellowstone Lake right there. Yeah, they're not reporting it. It came in small here at Yellowstone Lake, but that's that's the signature. All right, Yellowstone Lake, yeah, that activity continues. There's a large section there that I'm going to pull. And then I'll pull the other ones. We'll pull this one over here. These are all earthquakes. These are not tectonic earthquakes. These are regular earthquakes. Anyway, that one there was the largest that I saw here, comparing them to my different monitors that USGS is not reporting. Oh, let's pull this up. There you go. I haven't pulled files from Moose Creek, Idaho in a long time because normally um, what it shows is what's going on there at Sawtooth. And it picks up a lot of the activity at Sawtooth. This is what it was showing when I pulled the file. Let's take a look here. This one here at Yellowstone Lake was marked in red. Uh, 21, 12, and 30 seconds. Here it is at Norris Junction. And this here, Moose Creek, Idaho. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know why it so shows up so small, the signature, but it actually shows up pretty good here on this, bringing up um, some heat. Um, it does have a P wave here. The P wave is the first signature of the earthquake. Um, the second wave, which is the S wave, that goes around the outside of the earth. All right, 14, 18, and 30 seconds, 14, 90. Again, this here is Norris Junction. Looks like there was a small earthquake that caused possibly a rock slide. That's what that signature is. 
and then some hot gases in. Doesn't really show up at Yellowstone Lake, but here at Moose Creek, Idaho, you can see, you know, a lot of shaking going on here. Uh, I want to just kind of jump around to the ones that are marked in red for you on these different sites. Let me close this out. We got what right there. Um, 1121, um, 1126, um, where's this one at? There we go. 1116, um, 438. Yeah, Moose Creek's been really active. We'll go up there and we'll come up here to Yellowstone Lake. Yeah, just after midnight universal time. Uh, 30 seconds. There's one there. And a couple there. Got another one there. And another one there. This one here, let me check it out. Five minutes after midnight universal time at Yellowstone Lake. Uh, this would be Madison River. And then Norris Junction. You know, I've talked about Yellowstone Lake and all the activity and how the uh, fault zone there has been widening, allowing um, the eventual eruption there. I'm trying to find this one here. Um, it's got a dike of rhyolite at the bottom that's trying to come through. So Yellowstone Lake and West Thumb has been really active. Okay, uh, 10.05. Um, 438, yeah. These ones at Yellowstone Lake, yeah, they're probably just very small microquakes. But you notice there's a lot of them marked in red. Um, nothing really marked in red for the Norris Geyser Basin. And then for the uh, Moose Creek, Idaho, they got, what, two marked in red. And that's it. That one there, and that one there. All right, the tilt meter for the Norris Geyser Basin area. This is a borehole, a very deep well under the ground, 950 for the last seven days. It's been holding pretty steady. Um, around the 10th, it took a breath, and the 13th, it took a breath. And these are all the earthquakes. Within the last seven days, we got two way outside on the edge of the disk. Uplift at this monitor has mostly been straight up the last week, and each dot would be an earthquake um, that either caused uplift or for the ground to drop. And then the last 30 days. All right. The magma is still flowing under the ground, heading east. The monitor for Grant, which is on the um, southwestern part of Yellowstone Lake, and let's come down to the disc. Yep, trend of earthquakes and the magma flowing is still going east. I talked about how the lakes got uplift and tilting. Now that's the last seven days and then the last 30 days. It's still rising up slowly though. And those are the earthquakes for the last 30 days. Yeah, it's like wow. Another tilt meter. This is Yellowstone Lake. This is at the northern end by the fishing bridge for the last seven days. Magma is still flowing, going east under the ground. And it's not really moving too much in any direction, but mostly straight up. But it's still rising up there and it shows it kind of in a northern direction. Now, that's the area of the fishing bridge. And as the water rises in that area, it kind of um, makes it where the water doesn't flow out as easily at the fishing bridge. Now, this is for the last 30 days. There you go. The tilt meter for the Madison River area. All right, for the last seven days. And it's kind of still going east, but now it's... Um, kind of swinging it a little tiny bit towards the north. And again, each dot would be an earthquake for the last seven days. And then the last 30 days. Yeah, Mount Etna there in Italy erupted today with a huge plume 
of uh, lava shooting out of the ground. You know, the core of the earth is heating up, and because of that, we're going to see uh, more eruptions. As the uh, earth heats up, the uh, magma that's under the ground, certain minerals separate. Nickel, being one of them, rises more quickly than other types of material. And I think it was about two years ago that they announced that the earth core was heating up. You know, and I wonder if that's got anything to do with the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field. Um, has any research gone into the last magnetic polar reversal or flip, as they call it? Did the Earth's core heat up back then like it is now? You know, they do know that during that time when it reversed, that there was an increase in earthquakes and volcanic activity. Here we have another borehole for the Norris Geyser Basin area, borehole 205, for the last week. And yeah, let's see the magma here. It's not going east. Yeah, it's right in the middle between, um, yeah, north and east. Okay, so let's go down to the last 30 days. Yeah, top is north, bottom is east. Yeah, interesting. Anyways, that's all I have for you right now. Yeah, it's a little quiet right now. The quiet before the storm. Yeah, good question. Um, short and to the point. Anyways, if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'm also on Twitter. And if you wish to support my work, I'm also on Patreon. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.